recorded. And recording has begun. So good evening, everyone. And I'm so happy that you have joined us here. We have a comment coming in. Okay, thank you, Mimi. Um, so welcome. And we're starting our third and final part of our series of our pre-Rosh Hashanah delicious cooking series. We've done the Bombay chicken, the chocolate pop de creme. We've done the apple crumble. Thank you to Deanna Burstein and Carol Brenner. And now we're ready for our third final series with, sorry? With none other than Chani. And tonight Chani is gonna treat us with a demonstration of salmon and salads, which are as she may tell you, my favorite dishes. That's all I need and I'm good to go. We're getting really close to Rosh Hashanah now. In fact, there are just 12 days left. Today being the 18th of the month of Elul, which in Hebrew we would say it's Chai Elul. You know, no Chai, everyone wears the necklace Chai. Uh, and the 18th of the 12 days left, which is very significant because holy spiritual masters teach us that the next 12 days, starting today, in fact, reflect a day per month of the past year. So today is an opportunity to reflect on your life from the first month of the past year, tomorrow the second month. And we have this chance as a, like a last lap of the year to really look into our past year over the next, these next 12 days. So it's a very opportune time. Also, today happens to be birthday celebrations of two great tzaddikim holy people. One you may have heard of, I'm sure, it's the Baal Shem Tov, and the other is Reb Shnezalman of Liadi, the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe. And both of them brought incredible light into this world, and their teachings of Torah and Hasidut brought to life people's souls, gave them more of a reason to live and to believe. And one of their very central teachings, which I think is appropriate for tonight, is, you know, people have a challenge with food very often. Food can be a challenging exercise. And so how do we deal with food and not overeating and eating healthy and eating properly and having the right attitude? So on the one hand, a very harsh extreme is somebody who just enjoys food for the sake of food. They love food, they eat food, they enjoy food, they eat as much as they can. Obviously, that's not healthy. The other extreme are somebody who's trying to go on a more, it could be a more dietetic path, but definitely from a more spiritual path, I'm going to refrain from any physical indulgence in life. And so I may engage in fasting behaviors as a path of teshuvah, as a path of really trying to remedy myself and my soul, also extreme and not so appropriate. And the middle path, which was the path of the Baal Shem Tov taught, is that Food in this world is created by God. So it's an opportunity, if you do it right and mindfully, to actually utilize food in your life for the sake of being a better person and for the sake of bringing more holiness into this world. So you take a food item, and instead of just gluttonously enjoying it, indulging in it, you take it and you prepare it for a special meal, family time, maybe for Shabbat or for Rosh Hashanah. And then when we eat, we make a blessing and we eat as much as we need, healthy food to give us better life, healthier life, use that energy towards being a better person, more proactive, more productive, having more energy in our day to do another mitzvah to help somebody else. That whole cycle is a, a spiritual cycle of really causing redemption. Redemption to yourself, to your soul, redemption to the food around you in the world, redemption to everything around you. So that's what we're trying to do here, sanctify our food habits by preparing delicious foods for a holy festival to be able to enjoy with our family. This year, I'm not sure about guests, but certainly um, in a way of celebrating the Rosh Hashanah. Chani has chosen some special uh, recipes, very appropriate for the festival. We're going to have see dates, we're going to see apples, we're going to see fish. We're going to see all kinds of things that are very thematic to Rosh Hashanah. So I want to thank Chani very, very much for taking time out of her busy day to be with us tonight. Um, I'm going to try to unmute you from here. 
honey. So I'll tell you when I'm done. Let's see if that works. If not, I'll go and uh, do it myself. Um, nope. All right. I'm coming to unmute you. Can you hear me now? In case you didn't know, our rabbi is also a tech master. Now you know. Welcome, everybody. I'm looking forward to spending the next 45 minutes with you and hopefully making foods that um, have different ingredients that are special for this pod, for this holiday, will help us um, you know, get more in the spirit, get more in the mode. Uh, we're going to start off making a salmon. Uh, fish is actually uh, the sign of the month of Tishrei, the month with uh, the holidays. Well, Rosh Hashanah starts off in Elul, and then we move into Tishrei with it, and we go to Yom Kippur and Sukkot, and the entire month of Tishrei has a sign of a fish. And the sign of a fish is especially special because what is significant about a fish is that it never closes its eyes, it doesn't sleep. And just as a fish does not sleep, Hashem, God, doesn't sleep, and he's constantly there with us. Sometimes we feel it more, sometimes not as much. And in the month of Tishrei is a time we can especially connect with Hashem, with a symbol of a fish representing the fact that Hashem never sleeps and is always there to take care of us. So when I choose recipes for the Chagim, I try to, you know, from choosing between two things, I say, oh, this one has honey. And honey um, is especially used during this month. We try to use sweet things. I'm going to be making everything that has some sweet component, um, you know, to think about the word sweet and infuse it with us and give us all a sweet new year. Um, I'll also be using some Ceylon, which is date syrup. And the date is, uh, and date honey is very special um, to Israel. Many countries have lots of different honeys that come from different plants. However, um, Israel is known for its unique quality of having um, special date trees, date palm trees. Um, we'll also be using, um, so we have the fish, we have honey, we have dates in line. We're going to be using dates in the salad. In general, you can always look at your recipes and say, hey, I really like this recipe. What can I do to make it more in the spirit of Bachad? Maybe add some pomegranate seeds to a salad or to a fish, maybe put some apples in a salad, maybe put some apples in a chicken. You know, if there's a specific recipe that you like, but you wanna have it to, um, if you wanna bring a certain component, you can always just play with things and, you know, find um, one of the seven fruits of Israel to put in a recipe. And like one of the recipes I use, I usually um, use maple syrup for, but today I'll be using the Ceylon syrup. Or if I usually use sugar for something, I'll try and use honey, just to bring those recipes in. Okay, so, um, let's start off with our salmon. Here it is, nice big salmon. Um, I like to use oven to table dishes. I really, especially for buffets. However, this was a really big salmon. So I'm glad it was able to fit in here and hopefully we'll be lucky enough to be able to take it out properly. Well, we'll start off, what do you usually do with salmon? We put some lemon on it. So the best way to use a lemon is to first roll it around to get the juices moving. And then before I start anything, I am a big advocate for gloves in the kitchen. I really love to use my gloves. Um, I'm not so good at wearing aprons, but I'm really good at keeping to change gloves. And the truth is I like to wear an apron like this, I can wipe my hands, but instead I just take my gloves off and I keep changing them. So we'll start off with a lemon. We'll slice it. And then we'll just juice it over. The, if you want to catch the seeds, you could just do it through your hands, just like this. And we'll juice our salmon with the lemon. And if some seeds get on it, don't worry. That's okay. You can always take them off after. I'm actually using um, this little cutting board. Oh, well, first, let me start off by thanking Danielle Karp. I'm so thankful that she opened her kitchen to me. This is the kitchen we're using. Such a beautiful kitchen. I love it. Um, and she also showed me this really cute apple cutting board. I was like, oh, perfect for Rosh Hashanah. So here we go. 
get our salmon, um, the lemon over the salmon. If you are doing this with me, if you feel I've gone too fast or you're not sure if you have something ready, you can always, you know, take your time to fill it in. There'll be time to catch up as we'll be making other things as well. So we have our lemon on our salmon. Now let's put together a marinade that we'll be pouring over the salmon. We'll start off with two tablespoons of teriyaki. Although I usually use two tablespoons, this looks really big. So I am going to double the recipe and use four tablespoons, which is more or less, oops, my earbud just fell out. Just, is that fine? Can you hear me? Um, yes, we hear you well. Out. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, which is about a quarter cup. So I'm doubling the recipe and I'm using a quarter cup teriyaki. Putting it right here in this bowl and moving on to the next step. Then we're going to be putting a half a cup of soy sauce into our bowl as part of our marinade. Half a cup of soy sauce, here we go. These soy sauce annoy me a little. I really should take off the top cover. But we got it, we got our soy sauce in. Then we'll move on to our Dijon mustard. If you don't have Dijon mustard, that's fine. Just look at what ingredients are in Dijon mustard compared to regular mustard. You can use regular mustard and just play around with it. Distilled white vinegar, just pour some white vinegar in your mustard. Um, there's some salt, white wine, fruit pectin. You can always use a bit of honey for that and a bit of sugar and some spices. So, you know, don't be afraid if you see a recipe that calls for something that you have something similar in the house. You can always try to substitute and play around with it. We need a cup of Dijon mustard. So I will be putting in two half cups as I already made my half cup dirty. I like to do that. Um, if I already have something that needs to be washed, why not double use it and make it look No, no. Um, no, we don't hear you. One minute. No, we don't hear you at all. I'm checking one second. Can you hear me when I talk? Yeah. You hear me through the earbud? Yeah. Try talking again. Sorry. No.
I need what I need. Uh oh. Should we do it without the AirPods? See if that helps. Um, you can hear me now. So give me the AirPods and then I'll test them out again. I think you hear me. Very faintly. I'll just talk louder. Is that better? Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me properly. All right, let's go on. Thank you so much for your patience. Okay, we're up to the honey part now. We're going to be putting in um, recipe calls for a half a cup. Again, I'm doubling the recipe and I'm going to be doing a full cup of honey right into the marinade. So it's a bit of a teriyaki twist in this marinade. And teriyaki is always yummy on salmon, they say. If you believe it, I don't eat salmon, but I do make it because my husband really does like it. And then we have uh, five cloves of garlic mixed. We'll put that right in and start mixing up our marinade. I'll take off my glove because it's all sticky now. And whisk it up until it's a nice mixture. Look, I doubled the recipe and it does look like a lot. I don't think I'll be using all of it. Um, but it'll stay good. So I'll make this salmon now. I'm probably going to be making it um, in two days as I'm preparing a meal for someone that had a baby. So here I'm like, ooh, great. I already have my marinade. Perfect. I'm glad I made a double. So normally what I like to do is let my salmon sit with the marinade. I find it really makes a difference. Um, six hours, a couple of hours, sometimes even two, three hours or overnight. And what I'll do is I'll put in a big Ziploc bag. And, and my Ziploc bag will sit in the fridge with the salmon inside. Excuse me, while I get another glove. And, and then in the morning, I'll put it into the oven or right before Shabbat, when I'm ready to cook it, I'll stick it into the oven. And when you let it sit, it really makes a difference to the flavor. We don't have time for that today, and it'll still be delicious. I am not concerned. So here we go. Like I said, I like to use gloves, and I like to just rub it over, especially since I'm not a very big fish eater. Um, I've gotten a lot more mature though, and a lot more tolerant for my age. So I'm a little more well-behaved. In my house growing up, everyone knew they had to keep the salmon far away from me and the gefilte fish, any type of fish, keep far away from me. I used to help my mother cook for Shabbat. One thing I wouldn't make is the fish. So she told me once you get married, she was right. And that's not too bad. So here is our salmon, and here comes the fun part. What I love about this recipe is that I really haven't seen it around much, and it makes a great statement. It makes such a beautiful statement on the table, especially if you are um, really into black and white decor, which is quite trendy these days. Um, this salmon really is pleasing. It's really pleasing to the eye. And it looks beautiful if you serve it on a black plate or a nice white dish with a bit of pasta on the side, which I'll show you later when we plate it. So now we're going to be pouring the sesame seeds over it. And don't worry with the sauce around. Um, it'll actually be nice and give some juice on the bottom. I like to cook my salmon with a skin. I know many people like to remove their skin, but once I found out that most of the omega-3s are in the part between the skin and the flesh, and many times when they skin it, that part will come off. I realize that it's a good idea to keep it on because we're trying to get you know, as much um, nutrients out of the fish as possible. So we're going to strike the salmon out. And I like to use a knife to give me, you know, a bit of structure here to make sure it comes out as even as possible. I'm not a perfectionist, so it does make a difference when it looks nice. I like to do it on a diagonal. I'm going to be doing it on a diagonal going this way. And let's see how it comes out. We'll start up with some black sesame seeds right here black roasted sesame seeds. And we will pour some onto the fish, right? Just like that. There we go. And I just like to clean it up just a little bit so that I can move on to the white without getting it too, you know, mixed in. If some of it gets mixed together, that's fine. It'll still look beautiful. Here we go with our white sesame seeds. Pour it over the fish just like that. And then we'll move forward onto the black. Wipe it down, stick it in, and continue. Some people don't love the 
just our contrast. And if you just want to mix together some white and black sesame seeds, that's fine too. That looks beautiful as well. And I'm sure if you like roasted or toasted sesame seeds, go for it. Toast them up. You know, don't be afraid to experiment with a recipe. If you think there's something that you will like better, I'm going to make this layer a little thicker. Otherwise, we'll be here forever changing around. So sometimes people ask me, like, when did you start cooking? Did you always love to cook? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. I always loved to cook. From when I was a little girl, I used to beg my mother if I could help her out in the kitchen. And I have to be honest, my mother didn't love it. She felt like it would just everything would just take her so much longer. She allowed her child in the kitchen. So she challenged me. And she said, okay, when you start cleaning the chickens, that'll be the day that I'm going to let you into my kitchen. Guess what? I started cleaning chickens. And that was my job every Friday before Shabbat. I was in charge of cleaning the chickens. And a couple of weeks later, she started me doing the next thing. She started letting me, you know, prepare the vegetables for the soup. And then she started letting me stand over the pot. And then she started letting me clean the schnitzel and make the schnitzel. And oh my gosh, I loved it. I was in heaven. By the time I got to high school, all my friends, school would end early to get ready for Shabbat. And everybody, would, especially on the long Fridays, the summer Fridays, when there was lots of time before Shabbat would begin, my friends would always hop on the three train right from Crown Heights, Brooklyn. And they would go shopping on a Friday. What a great thing to have time on a Friday. And I would be in the kitchen cooking with my mother. And they would be like, oh, you're such a good daughter. You're so nice. But I really enjoyed it. As much as it was nice that I was helping out my mom, I have to say it was really a good opportunity for me to improve my culinary skills. And these days when my kids ask me to be in the kitchen, I think it's become a lot more popular also with lots of, you know, um, children shows with cooking. It's become a lot more um, popular to have children in the kitchen. Whereas a few decades ago, you know, children weren't exactly um, thought of as capable of, you know, bringing their talents in the kitchen. Um, so here we go. We're almost completed and it's looking so beautiful. I'm really pleased with how it's coming out. Um, it's a really nice big size salmon. So I'm going to have to um, share this with Danielle because my husband is the only salmon eater in our home. Here we go. So I know most recipes don't call for covering your salmon. So in our home, we like to cook our salmon real well because the person that does eat salmon likes a well-cooked salmon. So I will be covering my, loosely covering my salmon. I'll put it in the oven for about 45 minutes. It's a really nice size piece. And it'll probably be ready closer to 40 minutes. So let's get some foil. I'm going to cover it. If you prefer keeping your salmon uncovered, go with it. Do your thing. However you like your salmon. If you like it a little less well done, cook it for a little longer, a little shorter, so it's flaky inside. Or if you like it when it's a little pink, pink flesh, here it goes. Just stick it in the oven. Do you mind know, setting the timer for me? Thank you. So I'm going to put the other right here. Um, about 40 minutes. So I guess it will be Do you need me to turn the camera? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. Just like that. All right. Let's clear up this area. And we are going to get started. Oh, I put lots of sesame seeds. I thought I'd be needing more. A little bit goes a long way. That salmon did look so big. But I'm glad we were able to. Camera bell. All right, is the camera, honey, want to come fix the camera? I think the camera's in a bit of a slant. Is he here? All right, let's see what we can do here. Oh yeah, because it fell. All right, and now we'll get started with our salad. We'll start first with the kale salad. I'm going to use this bowl right here, this nice 
salad. Start again. Go. You're muted. Go. This salad. Um, I actually was first inspired and introduced to by Jamie, Jamie Benvella, and then I took my own little twists on it, and I. What to Let's get started with our kale salad. Like I said, um, I took some of my own, I took the liberty to um, change it around a bit, add a few things, and make it my own. And it's become my family favorite. My sisters make it now. Um, we keep adding some things to it here and there, keep changing it around. So let's start with the kale. I know people like to massage their kale. So this is lucky for it. But I like to get it done. I like to take out these pieces, get ready for someone to tell me that these are the most nutritious parts of kale. But I find it really hard to eat the hard parts. Well, the good thing about kale salads, when I have cabbage as well, is that you really can cook um, it against and season it um, earlier. So, you know, like when you're having lots of company, it's always nice to be able to make a salad that can get seasoned earlier without getting soggy. One last step to do once the guests have arrived. So, what sort of um, foods are big enough? I usually like to make it in like a aluminum foil pan and mix it up and then make it nice and cool. And the rest of it is flat. And for today, we're just going to be over right there. If you like to use fresh kale, go ahead. Um, you can twist your uh, green, add some nice. That is tends to lose more nutrients. Cutting out. Okay, I'm still continuing. Oh, I should just rewind what I'm saying. I'm just talking about kale. And well, it's become the latest green. You know, there's always, you know, it used to be iceberg lettuce, and then it was like, no, don't eat iceberg lettuce. It's not green enough. The greener something is, the more nutrients it has. So then we went to romaine lettuce, and then we started getting fans with all these other different lettuces. And then kale became a big deal last couple of years. And I actually do love it. Lots of things you can make with it. I know lots of people that make kale chips. Again, all I'm doing is taking out the spines. And if you like to keep them in, go for it. Um, so I like, I like my kale a little softer. I'm sure I could keep it in, especially if I put the dressing on a little earlier. I'm sure it won't, you won't feel the, The roughness of it. If you like to uh, massage your tail with some olive oil, go for it. I find that as long as I dress it early enough, it gets the same qualities as massaging it. So I'm sure there's other things that you get from it. Um, you know, some people tell me, oh, you must have been up all night cooking. Sorry, that's not my MO. I love to make delicious food, but I don't like to be up all night. And although I do love the kitchen, at a certain hour, it's time to say good night. So I do try to make my life easier and I buy ready chopped vegetables when I can, um, unless I find that the flavor isn't as good and it really makes a difference. I'll try to take the easy route as much as possible, as long as it doesn't compromise in anything else about it. Okay, so we have our kale in here and I'm gonna take a little bit out. Um, Kale does go down. So after you season it and you see it's going down, you can always take, you know, take some of the vegetables that you put aside and then just stick it back in. Thank you so much. All right, so we have our kale. I know I put on the list on the head of cabbage. So I went ahead and shredded my cabbage. 
I find it really hard. In Brooklyn, I was really able to find lots of places that have shredded bread cabin. And the main supermarkets here, I really can't find it. Kosher Kingdom does do it. And if they don't have it, you could always give them a red cabbage from the store that you buy and ask them to shred it for you. Or you can use a bag of white shredded cabbage. I do love the way the purple cabbage looks with the greens. It's such a pretty um, combination. So I do recommend using the purple cabbage. So go ahead and use any cabbage that you feel like. Um, you know what, Daniel? Can I um, use the cutting board again? Is that okay? So here's some red cabbage, and our red cabbage is in. Um, so, what's next is that we have our Brussels sprouts. I didn't put this on, I don't think it was on the recipe. Um, here we found our Brussels sprouts. These have been washed, so they can be tricky. So, it's a good idea. To check them really well for kosher wise for any insects. So I'm going to be peeling the outer layer and I'm not cooking it whole so that's a little easier to check since I'll be um, shredding it and slicing it up into really thin, thin, thin like pieces. Sometimes you can get like you can get broccoli slaw. I, wonder if you, I think you can get Brussels sprout slaw as well. Um, where you can just stick it in the food processor and shred it. I'm not sure how that would work since they're so small, but it might work well. It's really nice to get this combination of really great vegetables. And it's really such a hit, the salad. So if you do decide to make it, I would love to hear your take on it and what you think about it. So here, I'm, when I cut it open, I can really see the insides and see if I can see any bugs while I'm checking, while I'm chopping it up. Just look through real quick. Here I'm using about four or even three. They're really big, these Brussels sprouts. So depending on half the size of your Brussels sprouts, you'll decide how many you want to use. I don't have with me today, but sometimes I also put in some broccoli slaw into the salad. That's really yummy as well. So here is our chopped up Brussels sprouts, and then we go on to the fun stuff. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe we'll put one more in. Give it a nice crunch. Lots of crunchy vegetables in here. You have the, um, the cabbage, you have the Brussels sprouts, and soon we'll be putting in um, a few other yummy things. On Rosh Hashanah, yeah, yeah, the fruit processor, definitely. And what are you putting in now? I'm putting in Brussels sprouts. Yeah, our fruit processor is probably a lot better than chopping up all these Brussels sprouts. But that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. That took pretty quick. I also have, um, I have dates here, and you could get um, chopped dates, though I find them to be a little dry. So I do like to get pitted dates that, um, there's no pit in them, they're pitted. Um, but they're whole, they're full, so they're not as dry. And I would say, I mean, this does look like a lot. I probably won't be using the whole thing, um, depending how big your salad is. What I'm making now is a little smaller than what I'll typically make. I'll probably make a salad double the size in a typical Shabbat or Chag. Um, so here we have, so far I've put in two, I'll probably put in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll put in ten chopped dates, just like that. Here we go. And see the date gives it the real Rosh Hashanah feel. Here we go. And there's lots of different dates out there. And you could really choose, you know, Turkish dates. There's the jewel dates, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. You could really, and I'll put a few more in. The truth is it's so yummy with all the dates in. Why deprive whoever's eating the salad of a date? Make sure everyone can get a few dates on their plate. We'll just put a few more in. Here we go. We got the dates inside. Now we are going to put some crazes inside. Crazes come from cranberries. They're also a bit like a raisin. And in my head, I told myself, ooh, I'm also putting in um, raisins. But no, I forgot that crazes are just cranberry. Okay. I'm going to get this out. Meanwhile, I like to make my salad dressing in these um, bottle blenders. Um, so these days, 
people like to make shapes in them. I like to make my sewing dressings in them. I find that if I have honey or something thick like mayo, I have the yellow and red that from there. Hmm, using my sound. All right, let's fix the sound again. All right, here we are. So we're finished with the um, with the date. And we have scallions. If you prefer red onions, use red onions. I am not a big fan of red onions. So when something calls for a red onion, I'll usually put a scallion inside. So on a Friday, I'll just prepare myself a big bowl of scallions and I'll probably be using it in lots of different things. And here I can just um, put it in. I find that most salads that have a sweet dressing can really use that component of a flavor from an onion or a scallion, and it really helps bring out the sweetness, but it doesn't make it um, too candy-ish or too sweet. So we put our scallions in, and here's some sunflower seeds here. We'll put some sunflower seeds in. It's probably about, uh, hmm, maybe like four tablespoons or so. And here's some pumpkin seeds. If you like to roast them beforehand, go for it. I like them plain just like this. We got some pumpkin seeds in here, and now we're ready to make the dressing. I didn't make the dressing before. I'm going to be making it with you right now. So I have for the dressing, I have some mayo. And I think you, I have, you see? I have some mayo here. So we'll start with the mayonnaise. We're going to be putting in a cup of mayonnaise. Right here is my blender bottle. I have the, um, have everything right here. We've got a spoon and we will start with a cup of mayo. I need this a third cup, so I'll just do it three times. One, oops, a bit of a mess here. Two, and three. You can also just put your standard coleslaw dressing in here. I've done that before when I'm in a bind and I already have it made. In the refrigerator. So here goes a cup of mayo. What I find the general rule is fat and acid is usually um, whatever the fat, half the acid. So the mayo, I'm going to look at it as a fat, and the vinegar is my acid. So I had a half a cup of, I had one cup of mayo, I'm going to do a half a cup of my vinegar. If you prefer lemon, go ahead. For this salad, I really do like the vinegar taste. If you find vinegar to be too strong, try some rice vinegar. That could work as well. It's really simple. I also like to do, whoops, especially for Rosh Hashanah and I like things sweet, I like to do half the sweetness. So here I'm going to be using Ceylon natural date syrup. This is not one that, it's natural. You could buy one that's a little more liquefied and it has some other ingredients added, usually some water and sugar. Um, this one is 100% date syrup. So I'm going to be putting a half a cup. You know, it's really strong, it looks. I'll probably do a little less than a half a cup going to be a very strong flavor, also date, plus we have dates in there already. So I'm gonna do a little less than a half a cup of a Ceylon. It's really quite a simple dressing. You know, there are so many yummy, delicious things in the salad. That very simple dressing is all that it needs. I'm going to take some salt. You know, I don't really measure my salt, but I sometimes like close my eyes and I imagine how big my salad is and I imagine myself pouring it over the salad, how much I think this salad would need, and then I do it into my thing. Um, and a bit of black pepper. If you want an ounce, it might be about a half a teaspoon and a quarter of a teaspoon black pepper. And into this dress, oops, I think I put a little bit of it's gonna have a bit of a kick. I also like to put some soy sauce or coconut aminos into here. I didn't bring my cocoa aminos, but both feel free to put some cocoa aminos. I really just pour in about a tablespoon of soy sauce, and here we go. We will close this up, and I'm not going to dress it right now. Um, 
because I don't think we'll be eating this massive salad. What I do is before Shabbat or if I'm having a big dinner, I love to make my dressings the night before. I make my dressings the night before and then put them in the, if they have ingredients that need to be refrigerated, put them into the refrigerator, wrap it really tight with wrap up, don't use foil, that will, um, you know, it, it's not so good for the vegetables, it will um, turn, the lettuce turns brown from it and the vegetables will turn it. So here we go. And you know, when you use honey, it also, it gets really thick in the refrigerator, so don't forget to take it out of the refrigerator about 10 minutes before serving. And if you have the uh, blender bottle, it's great, because you just shake it up. I know they make other dressing bottles with whisk. To me, this is my magic trick. So here it is, beautiful salad. Look how beautiful that looks. Um, although sometimes I like to serve a salad and present it beautifully, this salad does need to be mixed before uh, to get to, for it to absorb all the flavor. All right, are you ready for the second salad? Yeah? Are you ready for the second salad? Yes, we are ready. Yes. Great. Excellent. Let's put this salad aside. Thank you, Danielle. And we are going to get all of our ingredients ready for the second salad. For this salad, I will use a medium salad. So much. I have this teacher here to help out. She's being so helpful. Appreciate it. Not only am I making a mess in our house, I'm also asking for her help. Honey, when you talk down there, no one hears you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Just move this. And this right here. Here we go. Just Okay. So we'll start off with the dressing for the salad. Can you hear me? Yeah. We'll, we'll start off with the dressing for the salad, which is so simple. It's amazing. It's my go to dressing. It's three ingredients, and each of them is the same amount. So the three ingredients are toasted sesame oil, right here. Let me see. What did I put in here? Did I use, what did I use the, the toasted, oh, that's what's in there before. Okay. We have soy sauce, some soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, and honey. What's that going to make me? And it's a half a cup of each, a quarter cup of each, or one cup of each. Bottom line, it's the same amount of each one, depending on how big your salad is. And here we go. So I already have some soy sauce. Let's put the soy sauce away. All right, all right, I'll pause. Sorry about the sound. Challenging. Hopefully, you'll all get the recipe soon. And watching you make it will be helpful. So, we have a half a cup of soy sauce in here. For this salad dressing, you could just use um, one cup and just watch it rise. Half a cup of each. And just like one So, I'll just stick it into my blender bottle. The trick with using honey in dressing is that if there is oil in the dressing as well or in the recipe as well, use the measuring cup for the oil first. Because then once you do the when you do the honey, it will just slip right out. So I'm pouring a half a cup of sesame oil here. There we go. Oh perfect, 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 because I left this down before and it spilled everywhere. I hope I didn't have here. I think the bowl put it. So I have a half a cup of sesame oil right here. And we'll put it in. Here we go. And now we do a half a cup of honey. Here we go. See how beautiful this is out of the meat. See that? Isn't that awesome? Usually with honey, you have to sit and scrape away. So this is pretty amazing. This comes right out. Yeah, you know what that plate over there, the big plate? Thank you, Danielle. Okay. So here is a large dish. I really love when I can present my salad and make them look beautiful and then just pour some dressing over it right before serving. You can't do that with all salad, like the salad before does need to marinate in its own dressing. However, with this salad, you can. You can do just that. 
trying to get the mess out of the way so that you can see and it can actually look pretty. That just sounds pretty. Here is my um, bowl that needs to go inside. A blender bottle, let's put it inside. I'll try not to shake it just in a way that it will splatter over the screen. I've done that before. So here we go. You see how we're using the blender bottle with the honey? Doesn't get stuck to the bottom. And it's a lot easier to use. All right. So this salad is also some spinach. The spinach is already been pressed and washed. We're going to take the spinach. I'm just going to put it nicely. And sometimes you can, you can even use a really large. Just depending. If you're doing buffet style, I know this is a and it's not so typical. You're not making large buffets, but it really does look good in the buffet. And if it's, you know, sometimes when you use a really big dish, it's not heavy. It tends to be heavy. So it's not always the best idea, but here it's working. Okay. Now we have some string beans. Here we go. These string beans have been trimmed. They've been cut in half. If you want to cut them smaller, feel free to do so. They do get a little off in the spinach as it is the same color. So the sweet potato that we're going to be using soon will help, you know, give a pop of color. So here we go. You know, this um, salad that I'm going to forget, and it's, um, it's Ariana Galaxy, um, a younger girl. Uh, I just had her box mess for this year. She was so excited about the salad. When my children saw her eating it, this is a while back, probably over a year ago, they decided to eat it. And I'm so excited that they got into it because I really couldn't get them to eat string beans. But guess what? They're eating raw string beans now because they like the salad. I'm just finding some string beans that weren't cut yet. So the best way to cut string beans, here it is. You know, my grandmother, when she was in her 80s and she wasn't doing that well, but she wanted to feel useful in the kitchen, my aunt used to put a big bowl of string beans right in front of her and she would just trim off the ends. And she felt so good to be able to contribute to the cooking in the home. So when I see string beans, when I do this, it makes me think of my grandmother. May her neshama have an aliyah, but she has a but she'll see with Miriam. Her yard site is actually coming up. All right, so we got the string beans in. Now let's go, I didn't put this beforehand in the recipe when I was writing all the ingredients for you guys, I'm sorry, but here it is, an avocado. I really love to use this piece. You can get it on Amazon. It does all three steps. This cuts the avocado open, just like this. All around, this hopefully this is a good avocado. Beautiful, we got a green avocado. And this piece right here in the middle is perfect for taking out the pit. Here we go. I like the pit. No cuts. This piece right here in the middle makes beautiful slices of avocado. Well, if you like your avocados cubed, that's fine. You can just use the cutter right here and make cubes instead. And if you are wearing gloves like me, you don't even need a spoon. You just stick out your avocados and place them nicely over the top. Yeah, this one came out, this side came out a bit mushier, but avocado is avocado. Everyone loves when they see avocado in a salad. Um, here we go. We got the avocado going, and now for a beautiful pop of color. And I like to use pumpkin sometimes, or butternut squash. Those two here is probably the easiest regarding peeling and chopping. Uh, but this adds for such a beautiful presentation with some roasted. These are roasted, cubes. I took a sweet potato, peeled it, chopped it into cubes, um, sprayed it with some avocado spray. Um, or pan you can use with some salt over it and stuck it in the oven and roasted it for about 25 minutes or 425 on the top shelf. And here are the beautiful roasted sweet potato over the salad. Now, what I also like to put over it and it really adds a nice depth to it is some toasted sesame seeds. You just take some sesame seeds, again, spray a pan, you don't even have to. You don't have to spray the pan. Stick it in the oven on 425 for about 10 minutes. And then we get beautifully toasted sesame seeds. It brings so much flavor. In general, whenever, when you roast a vegetable, it really brings out its sweetness. These sesame seeds have some sesame oil still on them, which is fine because this dressing calls for sesame oil. 
So they're not sprinkling the way they would typically sprinkle. But look how beautiful that looks. Can you see all the garbage in the picture? In the, in the film? I hope not. I hope you get to see how beautiful this salad is. It's really. Honey, can you really hold the salad to water the camera? Okay, tilt. Yeah, gorgeous. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. You got the baby spinach, you got the string beans, the roasted sweet potato, some avocado, and toasted sesame seeds. And again, here's my salad dressing right here in my croissant jar. Three, three um, simple ingredients, same amount of each one, and you just drizzle it over. You know, I would drizzle it a little bit before, not right before, because it's nice when the string beans. I would try to pour it over where the string beans are, that when the string beans get the flavor, it makes a really yummy, delicious salad. Okay, you can make a check on our salmon. Let's go check on our salmon and see how it's doing. Okay. Okay, I don't hear you in the camera. Okay. Here, let's take a peek. I'm a little nervous. I hope it came out good. See? Let me open up a mic first. See if I want to see that. Oh, so beautiful. That does look nice. You know what? I would even leave it open now and let it finish cooking open for about 10 minutes. And when it's cooking open, you'll see the white sesame seeds will probably get a little bit toasted and that'll make them really delicious. You know what though, I think the end is ready. So what I'm gonna do is, let me put some things away here so I have some room. Um, can I have some paper towels? is show you how I like to plate this salmon. Can you please get me that? Thank you so much. Here, I'll just wipe this down a bit. What? Here we go. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit so we can see how I like to present the salmon. I know some people like to stick when they're you know, having a teriyaki-based protein, the side dish should complement it or match it. I agree, but sometimes good food is just good food. And I have a delicious pasta. Take over here pasta. Well, it's in here. Oh, it's so good. This is angel here pasta. Um, it's a nice thin pasta, and it has a quarter cup of olive oil, about two teaspoons of salt. It's one pound, one pound of pasta, two teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of black pepper. And I am going to be adding six cubes of frozen chopped basil to the salad. It's probably a good idea to do it while the pasta is hot so that it... Um, Defrost quickly, though this basil is not, so I'll put three in here and three into my main one. There we go. And again, I'm going to be getting a pair of gloves so that I can mix it properly. Right here, gloves. There we go. I love to use gloves also to mix salads. I find that the dressing goes in really well when I'm mixing um, a pasta as well. So, I'm going to take the basil and just mush it in a little. It's pretty um, defrosted already. You can use fresh basil, go for it. Though I do love the invention of these frozen cubes. You could also make your own frozen cubes, blend up your basil. Here we go. So I think the fish does look beautiful on a black plate. I don't have a black plate with me right now. 
what I'm going to be using is this right here. And there's something about salmon and a little bit of pasta. The pasta looks really pretty when you take it and you make it into these um, round, you can try to get round little, not listening to me so much, I probably put a little bit more oil, too much oil in. But if you don't have too much oil, you could sometimes get these really nice round um, piles. So there we go, we got it now. Uh oh, falling out. Oh, I'm not using it? Wait, let me take it out. Ah, oh, so much better. Okay. So we have the pasta, a nice little round. Um, obviously, this is a lot for, for one serving. This one didn't come out so pretty, so it's okay. We'll just leave it like that. Then we could take our salmon and get a nice, you can use a spatula as well if you'd like. Here we go. We have a nice slice of salmon. Probably use a little bit more time. Stick it right here in the middle. And if you have a smaller plate, that works. And it's such a beautiful presentation right here, some salmon with some basil pasta. And you can, like when you use a smaller plate, you don't see it as much. It's also pretty, you can put some greens on the side. You can put some, you know, two pieces of asparagus or sprinkle some parsley on the plate around it. And you have your beautiful zebra striped salmon with uh, basil pasta. Okay, I think we're more or less closing up here. I'm so glad you all joined. I will be sharing the recipes with proper amounts and directions. Wait for that. That'll be coming up in the next few days. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a Shana Tova. May you and your families be blessed with an abundance of good health, lots of nachas, pride from your children, and a little bit of pranasa wouldn't hurt either. Uh, may we all merit the ultimate redemption, the coming of Mashiach, speedily in our days. Amen. Thank you so much, honey. This looks delicious. The salmon, the salads. I hope you all enjoyed following along. Um, I'm looking forward. Daniela, can I share a little bit of this with you, hopefully? Honey, thank you so much. We wish everyone a Shana Tova Metzukah. Any further questions, we'll be happy to answer. And uh, this will be uploaded on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. And we look forward to seeing you at our next cooking demonstration sometime. Thank okay. you. All right, I think I'm going to put the salmon back in the oven for a bit more time. There we go. Okay, thank you, everybody. Great to thank see you. Thank you, all. Rabbi. Thank you, Hani. Thank you. Thanks, thank Monica. You. Thanks, Eric. Thank Thanks, you. Russ. It looks, it looks amazing. I'll tell you how it tastes tomorrow. <laughs> Thelma, Jerry, thank you. Karen, Donna, Elizabeth, thank you for joining. Clara. Um, Vivian, Max, Becky, Barbara, Leonard, Sarah, Sabrina, Judy, Cheryl, Ruth, Emily, Andrea, uh, Clara, who do I mix that miss out? Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Let me just look at these comments. Um, the salmon recipe was great. Yes, you are amazing. Yes, I agree. That's about you, honey, not me. And um, fantastic, everyone. We wish you a good night. Good night. We miss you. Bye.